shows that it's no longer a dream. Dr. Harry Ako is the lead scientist, the principal investigator, and he's the one that really knows all about this project and can be able to tell you why Hawaii is the, a proper place and a wonderful place for growing industrial hemp, not just for our islands, but I'll let Harry tell the rest of what that dream will be. What we're doing is industrial hemp. Okay. This one is has no psychoactive component. If you if you smoke it, you'll get sick. <laughs> That's all will happen. Um, HCNS is thinking of 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 growing hemp uh, plants to make hempcrete to build homes. Don Nelson has built a little home, and probably he's gonna. I heard that he's gonna tear down his oh, regular yes. home, yes. which is. I think when they, you know, you're talking NBA and millions of dollars salary a year, he probably has a mansion, not a house. <laughs> and so he's going to tear it down and, and build a hemp, a hempcrete mansion. So a hempcrete is one thing. Seeds, Hawaii is a weird combination of very high tech. We know how to do PCR. We have known this for 20 years. And we can do very high tech things and we, we're, we're subtropical. So we, can, we have the weather. So we supply seeds of shrimp, oysters, corn, and soybeans around the world. Also sugarcane seeds. So HCNS is thinking of being, grabbing the market for hemp seeds for everywhere. So if Kentucky wants to grow hemp, they'd come to Hawaii to buy seeds. Um, that's why this one right here, this scrawny little one, that's a temperate zone seed, okay? If we're gonna sell it to Colorado, they're gonna want the temperate zone seed because they're in a the temperate zone. So we have to figure out a way um, to, to, to grow temperate zone seeds in a tropical environment such as we have. And I think we probably use normal breeding instead of GMO techniques because we don't know which gene to insert where. <laughs> it's, sim it's simple as that. Um, you can see several characteristics. First of all, the fiber hemp grows super fast. You know, they just simply, this is it, okay? If you have a, please note, if you look on the bottom there, um, there are no weeds. These are self-weeding plants. They, well, you can just see why. They make shade and no weeds can grow because they don't get sunlight. Is um, it just because of that or is, is there some other property that they might, wards? They might uh, exude allelopathic chemicals, you know, or there might be a, a chemical defense mechanism the plants have, but just the fact that they don't, make, they don't let any sunlight go through, that's probably good enough. Okay. So we have two kinds of hemp, the big giant monster ones. I call them monsters, they're beasts. I mean, this is crazy, they're 10 weeks old. They got this big with 10 weeks old. And so it's a, it's a, it's a porous, um, homegrown, recyclable building material that does not need to be shipped in. It's grown here and we'll make houses out of it. So that's the hempcrete, the fiber hemp is hempcrete. And then the seeds, maybe we can capture yet another monopoly for high technology um, uh, monopoly for Hawaii that is to say hemp seeds we've already seen some of the seed hemp you can just see the plants and they're just covered with seeds right and you know uh, Cynthia brought some hemp chips one time in the hearing and everybody loved them they just ate them uh, also there's uh, in in um, in Canada there's a lot of work um, by these PE people and what they do is they put people on a weight training regime and then they feed them uh, hemp seeds and that increases the rate of, of muscle building so that's kind of that's kind of interesting too <laughs> okay and um, okay the future we need to do the nuts and bolts of farming. We need to figure out uh, irrigation because when, once you release it to the private sector, 
they're going to need to know how much they need to irrigate. And they'll set up their fields assuming X amount of water for the field. They need to know that before going in, otherwise they lose money or they might go bankrupt or something. Is this a very thirsty type of plant? This is a supposedly drought resistant plant. And right now we are exploring this option, the drought resistant aspect of it. They claim to be uh, not need very much um, fertilizer and um, we haven't, well, these have not received any fertilizer at all yet. And uh, we don't know. I mean, we need to do the experiment. We need to fertilize some little plots and not fertilize others and see if it helps or it doesn't help. Um, you know, the fewer chemicals we need to afford to Hawaii, the better. The way the weight of the stock, the weight of the stock relates to hempcrete. Farmers need to know that. If they invest X dollars in a field, how much return are they likely to get? We need to know that. Um, we need to cut off and weigh um, the leaves. Now you can see it's not insignificant amount of leaves. And that's for the cattle farmers or such. Okay. That's for the what? Cattle farmers. Oh. That's feed. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So in this feed here, you know, it's... It won't get sick? Huh? The cows won't get sick? I'm no. not going to smoke. <laughs> and, gonna, um, and, and, and you, you, know, you can do the same thing that I did before with Hawaii range-fed beef. Okay, I proved in, before that this beef is healthier to eat. So Hawaii range-fed beef is healthy. Um, the industry took that and they said, nobody buys healthy. People buy taste good. <laughs> <laughs> so they advertise taste good. They, they lost the healthy part. But you know, that's their business. That's what they do. So um, these should give you healthier beef if they eat the leaves. We can make um, omega-3 eggs and we, we made omega-3 eggs long time ago. It's, uh, they were able to obtain $8 a dozen. And is that because the chicken eat hemp feed? Uh, we did it with kukui. But can you do it with hemp? Yes, we can do it with hemp seed. And moreover, you know, my, my little parrot, his, his favorite snack is hemp. <laughs> <laughs> they, they love hemp.